For Global Business Update, Michael Wilson joins us now from London. Good morning, Michael. Morning. Um, so the number of COVID cases, it looks like in China, are actually falling. Falling too is the price of oil. Come on to all that. So basically, stocks in Hong Kong up about three and a half percent. Hang Seng up by five and a half percent. Mainland China, Shanghai Composite up about two and a quarter um, percent. Um, the, uh, the 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 COVID cases apparently yesterday were lower than Sunday. This is the first decline since November the 19th. Um, investors, as you know, had been reacting with a certain sort of unrest about the COVID restrictions and major US indices indexes lost around one and a half percent each. So China's COVID infections dropped for the first time in, in, in more than a week. There was no indication of new protests after those public demonstrations demonstrations yesterday. Um, the problem is, of course, that the lockdowns um, were affecting and still are affecting, as I understand it, the Chinese economy. As of the third quarter, national GDP down 3% um, year on year, far below the official target of 5.5% set in March. Um, the people uh now, now here's the thing we talked about the communist party paper yesterday the the the, the people's daily talking about the, that these covid restrictions should be better targeted um there's apparently um a, an official article now which has firmly ruled out the idea of relaxing any covid control so we see how that's going i'll come on to the oil price at the end of my report um, as far as the us is concerned stock futures are flat after major averages um, slight slid yesterday similarly reflecting those kind of covid concerns the dow um it futures fell by five points but it lost 497 points in proper and big trade uh, yesterday the s p slid one and a half percent and the nasdaq down one and a half percent too um, again, it, the, the, there's a lot of frustration about what the, the Chinese government is actually doing about these COVID lockdowns. And I think this is a very important issue. We could be seeing major changes this week as well, but we haven't seen them yet. Um, and that zero COVID policy is weighing on markets around the world. Elon Musk, once again, now he's saying that Apple has threatened to remove the Twitter app from its app store. He's, but, they, but they won't tell us why. That was, that's what Musk is tweeting at the moment. Um, he calls the Apple store cost of actually going on it a 30%, a secret 30% tax. Um, Apple should publish all censorship actions it's taken that affects its customers and so on. So this this kind of war that's going on right now. Apple, having said all that, Apple does not really want to lose um, Twitter, or at least its revenues don't, because it's actually um, the, the the largest um, the largest distributor um, of of the of Twitter on its on its iPhone app um, so far, and it, it gets a sizable amount of income from it. I'm not I'm not sure what the exact figures are, but if you look at the percentages, they're quite high. Disney, uh, remember CEO Bob Iger back again after leaving not that long ago he's now saying that um, he acknowledged that Disney's focus must shift towards making its streaming business profitable rather than simply uh, concentrating on adding subscribers so he's not actually going to employ anybody yet um, the let's shift our attention to the ECB and Europe. Christine Lagarde, the boss of the ECB, has said that she is not done, in inverted commas, uh, raising rates, still has a way to grow, doesn't agree that, um, when we're wondering whether this has happened in the United States, that actually inflation peaked in October. Um, however, uh, what the thought is from the markets that if they do raise rates again, it'll be about half a percent rather than three quarters of a percent. But again, the message from her is not done yet. Um, UK and uh, the Prime Minister um, talked with his, his first um, foreign policy uh, major foreign policy speech um, was sort of a few jibes at previous um, prime ministers saying no, 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 the golden relationship with China is clearly over and it was naive to think that trade could lead to social and political reform and that China is a systemic challenge to 
what he describes as our values and interests, but he's saying, and but um, they do, the, the UK does need to engage with China. We cannot simply ignore China's significance in world affairs. And he pointed to, to diplomacy and engagement. He gave no details of that, but clearly um, a, a sort of move um, towards China. Remember that um, apart from anything else, and ne never mind um, Newport Fab and all that stuff, um, the, the, the fact is that uh, the UK ban has banned the use of networks made by Huawei uh, in, in the UK. Former MI5 chief, here she is, Eliza Manning and Buller. Um, she is actually saying that, uh, um, that, that and, and she was talking to an audience of farmers. She's one herself now, after having retired from MI5, she raises sheep in Wales. Anyway, she's talking to farmers and saying that food security in the UK should be a very important part of national security policy. And we shouldn't be um, dependent on importing food as, as much as we do at the moment. I would say that hope of that, but there we are, that's, that's her. Um, the UK national grid, now, some customers of some of the um, some of the distributors were actually had volunteered to cut down on their electricity use if the national grid asked them to do it in return for that they get payments that scramble did not happen yesterday it was really there was a big worry yesterday that because what national grid wants to avoid is what happens i don't know what it's like in nigeria but certainly in south africa i can tell you they have they have these things called load shedding which are basically um rolling rolling blackouts people um here want want that avoided the national grid wants to avoid that hence they've been getting in touch with um consumers saying please use yes over the following hours that did not happen yesterday they uh, they, they managed to scramble and, and and get sufficient power to keep the home fires burning as it were however Here's oil then for you. West Texas Intermediate Group, they, they, they fell um, their lowest point since last December, um, briefly completely negative. It also means that consumers, particularly in the United States, are going to find that over the Christmas period, if this, if this continues to last, then gas at the pumps will be cheaper. This is all about China lockdowns and these very rare protests against Beijing this weekend. And, and this is raising doubts about the outlook for China's consumption. And thus, as I keep saying, uh, the oil, however much people tell you differently, is only a commodity. And there is this thing called consumer destruction. And if the consumers don't want it or decide not to buy it, then the price goes down doesn't matter about epic now are we seeing here's here's my question i don't know the answer to this before you ask me but i think we're seeing something quite significant this week we're seeing a possible china slowdown a possible change in china um pol uh, 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 national policy about covid and also the oil price as well i think these are fundamentals which are going to affect the market over the next two or three days i, I can't be drawn on why i just get this feeling that this is going to be a pivotal week yeah, and I, 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 share, I share that feeling too that probably it will shake up the market, but like I say, time will tell. I'll talk about the EU real quickly. Yeah, despite the fact that um, the argument out there is the fact that uh, uh, inflation has peaked, but Christian Lagarde says they'll still have to push up interest rates uh, some notches up. I mean, what's the sense behind that when things are already looking good already? I mean, if you look at the shipping costs, they've reduced, cost of inputs reduced, farm gate prices <coughs> reducing. And shouldn't I just leave things to, you know, uh, pull, pull back in, in line and, and all of that? And also, I'd like to talk about the wars of the publishers. H Apple Store now saying they are going to, you know, I mean, Elon Musk tweeting that Apple Store might probably want to pull out, you know, uh, Twitter app. But what Musk is complaining about is the 30% processing commission fee that big publishers yeah. like, they still charge from big app owners on the Apple store. So is there any agreement well, probably on that number? Yeah, uh, well, I, th I think, um, you know, I, I have a certain kind of sympathy with Apple. I mean, it is, it is after all their store and you don't have to be on the app store. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, let's not mistake this. Uh, Apple needs Twitter as much as Twitter needs Apple. It's a big distribution um, area for Twitter and Apple needs the income from Twitter. So I suspect there's a, a lot of, um, how shall I put it, saber rattling, if you like, going on right now. And remember the bird, Twitter, flies by the rules of the country um, <laughs> to which it 
to which it actually goes. And I feel as though that, that Twitter is going to face uh, the onslaught of regulators as never before. But it is a massive social media site and it is a huge customer for Apple. And so the two actually need to get together and, 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 and they probably will. As far as the ECB is concerned, yes, absolutely. It is all a bit confusing, isn't it? Um, I, and I, I agree with you. You know, if it were me, I'd just say, all right, let's just wait until that, those granular things that we talked about yesterday yesterday shipping costs in particular start to reduce inflation as they as as, as they surely will however uh, i think at the same time she's uh, christine lagarde is very very conscious of the fact that the ecb needs to be seen to be having a handle on inflation it it, it has been relatively relaxed about it um it was dovish for the first part of the year now it's turning slightly hawkish she's keeping that going i think I think she's talking politics, to be absolutely honest. But you know, who knows? I, I, but I, but I'm with you. I, I, if, I, if if it were me, I'd just let things go because it looks like things are taking care of themselves as we speak right now. We, oh, and we will get flash PMIs. Sorry, we'll get flash CPIs um, from Germany and France. I'm just looking now, and I can't see them. I don't think they're out yet this morning. But I suspect that the picture that they will give um, the the overall EU inflation rate is 10.9 percent. I have no reason to suspect that these two superpowers within the EU, in the EU will make a huge difference to that average. All right, thank you, Michael. Just going on to Bob Iger and Disney. Of course, we expect to hear news um, from them again and again in, the, in, the, in, in business, especially as he's just taken over from Chapek. However, I'm, I'm quite, you know, just analyzing the statement from him in how he hopes, you know, how the company has moved from just the, the, the metrics on growth now to profitability. So he's talked about money away from marketing, aggressive marketing and content, and moving on to, you know, looking at the business, business size, business structure. But for me, this is quite, um, this is quite interesting because when you look at streaming platforms, the focus is on content. How would he be able to manage making Disney more profitable without spending that much money on content or reducing the budget on content? Yeah. Good, good, good question. I, I think the answer to that is, number one, what he'll do is he'll try to apply the, 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 what, he, what he's saying to the employees is, first of all, no more employees. Uh, and, 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 and also he's saying to them, look, what we need to do is, is, is turn the company um, around from within rather than just simply relying on more subscribers. So to answer your question, I think, and I think this is right, I think that Disney would rely on its back catalogue. Um, it also, remember, has theme parks as well. So it has a big physical presence and it also has an enormous merchandising presence all the way, um, all, all the way around the world. And I think those are the kind of things, if I were him, I'd, I'd be concentrating on. That, that's, that, that's, the best that I, that's the best answer I can give you. That, that's what I think is happening at Disney right now. OK, first, let me start with Christian Lagarde. I, I thought the big takeaway f for me from our statement is that she said, we have to be very, very careful to see whether this will last. In other words, while she's taking a bearish uh, 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 position, she's also trying to be very careful. And that's why she says, look, yes, supply chain issues may have relaxed. You know, inflation uh, may have uh, peaked or gone down from 10.6% in October to about 10.4% now. But she says we have to be very, very careful. So I guess, you know, that explains it. But the key data that you referred to, uh, what we're told is that the key data will be released tomorrow. Maybe that would then, you know, uh, determine the uh, future direction one way or the other. But as for Chancellor, uh, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, saying that the golden season with China is over and that trade and development do not necessarily promote uh, democracy. Well, that's against what the theory says. Uh, but is he playing to the gallery, or is he, is he stating this matter of factly, considering the fact that he has been having a lot of issues with senior Tory uh, MPs, and even with former Prime Ministers, uh, uh, you know, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, who may have their own reasons, uh, on issues such as uh, uh, onshore wind farms, on housing, and he's not finding it so easy. Now he's using his... Uh, 
first uh, foreign policy speech uh, to look like, oh, it's, it's not as soft as it's been put out and his government is not facing uh, any serious uh, crisis. So what do you think? Finally, on the uh, online safety bill, now which is supposed to be tabled in the House of Commons today, Ofcom is telling us that children between the ages of 5 to about 11 are exposed to harmful content online. And, you know, these uh, you know, tech giants are supposed to uh, give commitments. Otherwise, they will pay 10% of their global pro profit as fines. Is that, is that really possible? And when the blame is put entirely on the, uh, on the uh, online uh, companies, how about parents? Where is the role for parents to oversee content and ensure that their children are not exposed to unnecessary uh, content? Do you think that uh, review of the uh, online safety bill uh, is going to uh, go through? Because there is also very significant opposition to it by persons who, says, who say that it is an assault on free speech. Well, um, a, a, a lot of questions there. I mean, as far as kids are concerned, um, I, I feel as though education probably would would stop them. I don't. I think I think controls are all right to talk about, but it's very very difficult to to do those kind of things. Because what you do with harmful content is, you know, it'll still be there. Um, it's just a question of how you actually get to it and, and whether children will be uh, wanting to get to it because it's forbidden. You, you know, it is, it's, it's the old trick, isn't it, really? So I, I, I do really feel as though that a lot of hot air will be expended about this. Um, but wh when it comes to actually cracking down on, on that kind of content, I do feel as though the horse has bolted. It, it, it will remain somewhere because the world is a nasty place, unfortunately. And I, I don't think there's any, I don't, I don't think there's any, any other way around that and um, as far as the ecb is concerned i think she's absolutely right to be careful um she has to be what what she doesn't want to do is to is to allow some of the countries which are within the eu and an in, enormously in debt not least of which italy for example to suffer in the same way that greece did not 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 that long ago and they have also have they not set up a fund to try to protect um, countries which are running foul of sovereign debt issues um, and, and that, that, that's a sort of safety net so everything she, she has a very very difficult job to do because all these economies are at different stages of their, of their development and she, it, it, the, the, the Europe the, the EU cannot see this experiment and it still is an experiment actually fail it has to keep going for better or worse so on the one hand she's cautious on the other hand she has to say look we, we are in control if we see inflation bubbling up we will have no we we'll have no alternative but to actually um to to kick down on it as far as sunak is concerned remember what he was saying and your your takeaway um I think ought to be look it, it's not like Truss and Johnson said that China is a systemic threat before him David Cameron wanted this kind of golden era of, of, of getting close to um, China assuming that getting holding hands in terms of trade would bring China into into the mainstream well of course that what Sunak is saying last night is it's naive. So he's taking a position, that's the politics of it. The detail of what our relationship will actually be still to be worked out. I think that, that, that's where we are at the moment. So yes, of course it's politics right now. Well, thank you very much, Michael Watson.